Hello everyone. In this video, let's talk about advantages and disadvantages of arrays. Okay. So first, coming to the data structures. So in the previous videos, we have seen we have two types of data structures. That is primitive and non-primitive data structures. So primitive data structures are all built-in data types like integer, float, double, boolean, all these. Okay. So under non-primitive data structures, we have two types: linear data structures and non-linear data structures. So linear data structures are classified again into two types: static and dynamic. So static means fixed; we cannot change. Okay. Under static linear data structures, we have arrays. Under dynamic data structures, we have uh, under dynamic linear data structures, we have list, stacks, and queues. So under non-linear data structures, we have trees, graphs, okay, hash tables like this. All this comes under non-linear data structures. So in this video, we are focusing mainly on static, linear, non-primitive data structures, that is arrays. Okay. So what is meant by an array? Array means it is the collection of elements of same data type accessed and using a common name. So here in this example, if you see int a of five, okay, that means if you want to declare an array, you have to declare an array like this. Just int a of five. If you want to initialize the array, then this is the syntax you have to follow. Int a of five means just the declaration, okay. Here, here if you are passing the elements, if you are passing the five elements, okay, like this in this order. Okay, then this is called as initialization of array or definition of an array. Okay, that means a of phi. That means a array contains phi elements, and these are the phi elements. Okay, these are the values of those phi elements: ten, twenty, twelve, thirty-four, and forty-five. Okay, suppose if you want to access these elements in an array, then we will uh, access through the index values. Okay, always. Uh, The index values of an array ranges from zero to n minus one. If n is the number of elements of an array, the index ranges from zero to n minus one. So here, as I am having five elements in my array, the index ranges from zero to four. C. A of zero means ten. A of one means twenty. A of two means twelve. A of three means thirty-four. A of four means forty-five. That means the index ranges from zero to four. Okay, so a of four represents forty-five. That means last index value of an element. A of zero represents the first index, the first value of an uh, array. That is ten. Okay, so what is meant by an array? Collection of elements of same data type. Here you have to take all the elements of same data type. All these are integer values, right? So access under the use uh, access under using a common name. So here. We are accessing it using a common name a. Okay, this one is a of zero. A of zero means ten. A of one means twenty, right? A of two uh, means twelve. A of three means thirty-four. A of uh, four means forty-five. That means we are accessing using a common name that is a. Okay, and zero, one, two, three, four. These are all index values. Okay, and the index value of an array ranges from zero to n minus one. For n number of elements of an array, the index ranges from zero to n minus one. You have to remember this. Okay. So, what is the advantage of these arrays? Okay. What are the main advantages of using arrays? So, it is used to represent multiple data items of same type by using only a single name. So, here just now we have seen we are using multiple items of same name by using a single name. Okay, so within single array here we are using multiple. We are accessing multiple elements. All these elements, or we can also call them as data items, okay, of the same type, which all belongs to the integer values. We are using under a single name that is a. Okay, so it can be used to implement other data structures like linked list, stacks, queues, trees, graphs, etc. So by using these arrays, we can implement other data structures. Okay, all the other dynamic data structures as well as non-linear data structures we can implement by using these arrays. Okay, 
So next point is 2D arrays are used to represent matrices. So here in this example we have seen an array which is a linear array. Here it is a one dimensional array we can also call it as a linear array. So here there is only see here we have taken only one value. Okay, so this is called as a one dimensional array or linear array. Suppose 2D arrays means here if you represent two values, suppose for example int phi, int a of phi, and suppose if you take here uh, some values like int a of 2, 3, okay, like this int a of and 3. So, here what it means means here this is called as a 2D array. Okay, Here we are taking two subscript values. So, these are called as a subscripts two values we are taking. Here we are taking two values. These are called as a 2D arrays. Here the representation of this will be in the form of rows and columns. Two rows. Okay, The first value represent rows that is 2 rows and the second value represent columns that is 3 columns. So, this is two dimensional arrays. Okay, One dimensional arrays are used just these are all called as linear arrays. Two dimensional arrays are used to represent matrices. So, in the matrix we will have rows and columns right. So, like this if you if you represent the array in this form okay these are called as two dimensional arrays. Okay, these arrays are used to represent matrices. So, here these two values are nothing but rows and columns. The first value 2 represent rows and the second value 3 represent columns. Okay, so two dimensional arrays are used to represent matrices. So, these three are the advantages of arrays. So, by using arrays we can uh, uh, represent data uh, multiple elements under a same type. Okay, multiple elements of the same data type under a single name. Okay, so this is the example for that. Here we are representing multiple elements of same data type that is integer under a single name that is A. Okay, and by using this arrays we can implement another data structures like linked list, stacks, queues, trees, graphs, all other data structures we can implement by using arrays. And two dimensional arrays are used to represent matrices. Okay, If you want to perform any matrix operation then you can take this two dimensional arrays and you can perform any matrix applications. Okay. So, next coming to disadvantages of arrays. First disadvantage is we must know in advance that how many elements are to be stored in array. Okay. Second one is uh, array is a static structure that is a static data structure. Static the meaning for statics is uh, fixed. The size is fixed in arrays. So that means uh, fixed size means the memory is also fixed. The memory which is allocated uh, to store these elements is also fixed. We cannot uh, increase the memory and we cannot decrease the memory. According to our requirement we cannot change. So that is uh, another disadvantage of using arrays. Okay, and third disadvantage is uh, elements of arrays are stored in a consecutive memory locations. That means that they occupy continuous memory locations. Okay, so because of this continuous memory locations, the insertion and deletion operations uh, are very difficult to perform on these arrays. Okay, and they are also even though if you if uh, we are performing this insertion and deletion operations, they takes a lot of time. Okay, they are very difficult to perform and also they take a lot of time. Okay, so which affects the performance of the algorithm, which, perform, which affects the performance of the program. So, these are the main disadvantages of using arrays. Okay, so to overcome these disadvantages, uh, we are going to dynamic data structures that is linked list, stacks, queues, all this comes under dynamic data structures. Okay. So, these are the as we are having this type, such type of uh, disadvantages in arrays because of that static nature we are going to to overcome these disadvantages we are preferring dynamic data structures. Okay? So, to overcome all these disadvantages in static data structures dynamic data structures came to the picture. Okay? So, in the 
next videos we are going to discuss about these dynamic data structures so in this video we have covered the static data structure that is arrays so what are the main disadvantages and what are the advantages of arrays we have covered in this video thank you